May 1809. The Austrians have beat Napoleon at the Battle of Aspern. Napoleon is pissed. But Charles, his enemy, hesitates and gives time for Napoleon to summon an army in Italy and his 9th and 11th Corps. Napoleon has nearly double the army that he had at Aspern Essling, and on the 4th of July, he moves across the river to attack. It's time for Napoleon's Revenge. Okay, so Napoleon's learned his lessons after Aspern Essling. One of the big ones is that he's going to use solid bridges instead of the pontoons to get across the Danube. So he's able to do this, and on July 5th, he moves across the plains against the Austrians who are uh, entrenched on guns overlooking the plains on the Wagram Plateau. He's up against a stream and then some heights that he has to reach. It's a little bit like Fredericksburg, and he has a pretty tough time and is, is eventually uh, forced back. And by the end of the day, he's unable to dislodge Charles and his troops. That night, both sides plan and scheme, and Charles decides in the morning at dawn to make an all-out attack upon the French. He's hoping that his brother John will show up with reinforcements that can attack Napoleon's right flank. Unfortunately, John doesn't show, which kind of leaves the Austrian plans uh, up in the air. At 10 a.m., the right French flank is attacked, and uh, then Charles tries to bring troops around to attack from the left rear. Napoleon then begins a concentrated artillery barrage on the Austrian center, and at 1 p.m. orders a general attack against the Austrian center. By 4, a, by 4 p.m., I'm sorry, the Austrian army has been battered to the point that they're unable to continue to fight and are forced to retreat. They do so in an orderly fashion, however. And because the French army is so fatigued by this time, they're unable to follow up. It's the largest battle in European history up until that point, and there are 37,000 French casualties and 41,000 Austrian casualties. Absolutely huge, bloody battle as these two forces pummel each other. Charles, several weeks later, Charles surrenders at the uh, Battle of Znaim. I love saying that. And this, unfortunately, really upsets the uh, um, Emperor of Austria. Let's go over the rules uh, real quick here. Um, as I've done in some of the past videos, like the one we did last week, um, the rules for this follow the Napoleonic rules that are in Napoleon at Waterloo. So if you haven't seen those yet, refer back to them. I am going to talk about a couple of the uh, minor rules variants, though, that this scenario has. The first is reinforcements. Now, if you look at the um, if you look at the map here, you see the uh, turn record track with reinforcements um, for the Austrians here and here. Uh, during round three, this Austrian units will come in over here, and on the first round of the uh, second morning, that's round seven. Uh, John's units may come in down here, and this is this was real variable. It wasn't sure whether he was going to show up or not. So what you do is each turn you roll a die six, and if you get a one, they come in. So you roll a uh, die six on this turn. The Austrian player does. If it's a one, they'll be down here. If it's anything else, move them down one slot on the turn record. Uh, the next turn, do the same thing. If it's a one, the Austrian units will come in. If not, move them down here. And continuing the, doing this to round 11. If no roll has been, if no roll of one has been rolled between round 7 and round 11, these units are simply removed from the table. They don't come in. Uh, a second rule that uh, is specific to this scenario is that cavalry and artillery units cannot ca cross stream hexides. They have to only cross at bridges. They can't advance in combat either across these these uh, stream hex sites here. That's, while the stream wasn't a really deep stream, it did have some fairly uh, sheer sides and banks that made it difficult to move cavalry and artillery across. Um, also, the French artillery on Le Beau Island here, the 10 to 1s, 
cannot leave the island. Everything else can, but these cannot. Uh, demoralization. Both sides can suffer from demoralization. If the French lose 50 combat units, they're de demoralized. And if the Austrians lose 45 combat units, for instance, this unit here would be seven combat units. It's the combat strength. If they lose those, they are no longer able to advance in combat if a um, if their foe retreats. So, for instance, let's just say these units are fighting this guy here, and this 4 to 4 unit has to retreat back to... He cannot do that if, he, if, the, if the Austrians were demoralized. During the night, night turns, there's two night turns here. The uh, units can move freely during the night turns. However, they cannot enter an enemy zone of control. Likewise, units that are in an enemy zone of control cannot leave that zone of control. So you can have quite a bit of movement, but if it involves a zone of control, then they can't move in or out of it. Finally, victory points. Um, there's one victory point for each strength point that's lost of the enemy, or that's beat by the enemy's side. So again, this would be, if this unit was eliminated, that would be seven uh, victory points to the French. The Austrians get victory points for uh, moving through Aspern and for moving through uh, Gross Enzerdorf and for moving through Essling. They get 25 if they enter Aspern at the, or if they're, if their units are in Aspern at the end, or if they were the most recent uh, side to move through there, they get 30 if they've been the most uh, recent units to enter Essling, and 35 for Gross Enzendorf, same thing. The French get a uh, victory point for being for each uh, strength point they have up on the heights here. So if they're able to move, if this unit's able to move up here and in the game here, they get the French get four victory points. So we'll kind of figure those up at the end and see how they go. Okay, a couple things about the uh, development of this game. It was uh, introduced in 1975 and uh, was designed by Terry Hardy. It uh, came out as an individual game, Vagram, the Peace of Vienna. It was also part of the SPI's uh, Napoleon at War Quad. One thing interesting about this game is that Heritage Models came out with a, a set of 15 millimeter pewter miniatures that uh, would go with it. And I think it's kind of unique in that way. I sure wish I had those guys. Okay, let's get started with gameplay. Um, we're going to, the French will go first, and the general tactic I'm going to use is I'm going to have the first few turns, the French are going to be forming their line right along here. Um, they won't actually try to go in and attack. I think I'll then try to use cavalry to uh, push the uh, left side of the Austrian line back and just kind of roll up it here. For my Austrians, I'm going to quickly try to move in and damage the French center as badly as possible. Um, I'll probably try to do that with all the reinforcements here. So let's go ahead and we'll do the French units here. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see better. And let's get started. Two, three, four, six, seven, eight. So remember roads are one half. Um, I think, let's check here, rivers, bridges, roads, roads, trails. Yeah, one half. Okay. Wanted to make sure on that. And uh, also remember that if you're defending in town, it helps. So... And we can move through the units, but we can't stop there. Um, seven, and he's not quite enough to get there, but that's okay. One, two, three, four. One, let's see here. One, two, three. Let's see, one, two, 
three, four. Gonna leave a gap, but that's okay. We can use our, our uh, cavalry unit as a temporary screen. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And, um, hmm. I'm going to go down here. One, two, let's see. One, two, three, five, six. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to use most of my cav. And I'm probably missing something here, but that's okay. One. Okay, got artillery here. I got some artillery down here. Let's try to move some artillery into this area. One, two, four. And I realize this is boring watching me do this, and I apologize. Um, Trying to do things that can make the channel a little more exciting. And if you're thinking of something, let me know down there. I'm happy to hear what you guys have to say. Sometimes I think watching someone play is kind of a boring thing to do. But if you have a way of, of uh, making it more exciting, yeah, please tell me. And I'd be happy to see what I could do to make this more interesting. Um, one thing I am encouraging people to do is grab Vassal and play along while I'm doing this to try to learn the game. That's that's the biggest thing I'm trying to do here is trying to get, teach people how to play the game. And so far I've played mostly old games. I'm not sure why. Three, four. Well, I do know why. Is that most of these are no longer in print and like I say they're available on Vassal and if you like them by all means go pick one up somewhere there's the board game geek has their has their market for stuff and you can pick these up a lot of times for not too much I mean some of the really old rare ones get pretty expensive but some like this you can pick up for twenty thirty dollars which isn't terrible, considering some games, new games, cost you, what, easily $100, $150. I won't even begin to talk about getting stuck with Gloomhaven for, what, $150, $180, something like that. It was, ugh. I'll do a review on that one of these days. <laughs> or a playthrough, I guess. But I think there's some value in these old games. and. I don't even know if anybody still stays with these. I'm I'm just curious if, if you are this far in watching this, tell me why you're still here and again what I can do to to keep the eyeballs glued to this. I'm not sure it's riveting, but 
Okay, there we go. I think that's it for the French turn. Um, looks like I've moved about everybody that can move, so let's move the Austrians into place. This is an interesting guy here, so interesting situation. Um, and the Austrians are gonna, <coughs> excuse me, Austrians are gonna move down here and begin this to kind of keep the uh, left flank busy. So let's get these guys into position. Four. Okay, and I think we can already hit, so if we can just hit some of these lone units out here, that's the other interesting things we can do is try to hit some of these lone units down. I'm going to move these guys into position to do that. Two, three. This is a real problem here, so we can move him into position, at least get a one to two. Um, Okay, it's getting the line formed up a little bit. Um, ooh, I know that guy could go in there, but it's going to be kind of hard. And again, I want to keep these guys at a defensive thing. As soon as he gets moved back, I'll probably move him back into Vagram again. Um, I think I'm already seeing what's going on here. I'm going to try to defend down here. Hmm. Okay. I think I'm going to lead everybody else here. Um, see where they're going to go and then try to attack back. Okay, that's it for end of uh, turn one. Let's go to turn two. Let's see. Oh, sorry. I forgot something. we got to have some combat here. So we got seven, eight, nine, ten to four, or two to one odds. Two to one odds. And we roll a d6 for a four is a defender retreat. Now he can retreat through and this guy can move out. Uh-oh, I saw something here though. This guy's in town. So let's redo a redo on this one. 10 to, it's not 10 to four, but 10 to eight or one to one odds and we rolled a four. So the attacker retreats, one, two. Move back, one, two, three, okay. And this guy stays in place. Okay, and that's it. Now then, the French can go. Try to form this line up. Um, again, they've got a good defensive posture here. Let's move this here, this here. And put our little guns in here.
We're actually going to move in there. I think this guy looks like he's doable. Okay, now we got to see about getting rid of these guys. Um, you can see things get kind of rough on these bridges, so I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and we're going to back that up with a gun and try to blast our way in. Uh, we'll do the same thing here. One, two, three, four, and hopefully we need to, we can easily, that looks like it's going to be a problem here. So let's go ahead and go, one, two, three, four, okay. Oh, that's a good defensive position. Okay. These guys are stuck, but let's... One... And... Use that as a crossing here. And we're going to move down into that position right there. Okay, so we've got that. Now we've got to move all these back row people. And it does help if you use the moved thing here. So. So we're kind of doing what Napoleon did here. I don't think I'll try to cross uh, the stream and move up against him though. Again, that's two Fredericks Bergy. And circle this cavalry here. Try to. Okay, there we go. I think we've moved pretty much everybody that needs to be moved. Um, we've got a little bit of combat. Now this is a 6 to 1 odds, and 6 to 1 is an interesting thing in this game because uh, with it, if we roll the dice and we get a 5 or 6, we get an exchange. So that could be very deadly for the, uh, for the attacker. Let's roll it and see. 4, okay. 4 is a uh, defender re uh, retreats, actually. Three, and we are going to move into that, into that hex. Here we have a six, a twelve to two, six to one again. Four defender retreats. One, two, three, and he's going to cross that bridge when he comes to it. Um, nine and eight. So this is going to be one to two odds because he's in a village. 
one, two, four, one, two, three, four, attacker retreats. And he's going to move back to, should he move in here or not? Give up his defensive position. I think I'm going to stay put. Uh, nobody is in range of the artillery, so that's it for the French move. Let's go to the Aus Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot this guy up here. Six, two, he's four, six, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen to four is three to one odds, which is six. Not good. Attacker retreats. One, two, three. One, two, three. <clears throat> they all fall back. Okay, now the Austrians can go. And what are they going to do? They don't have any real high power units, so they could try to move. I'm going to keep that steady. Well, now I'm going to use this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Move these two. One, two. And we're going to move him here. I'm going to try to keep some sort of defense up. I'm going to move this guy down here off the heights because something might come in range to take out. Um, He can't move into the... So we'll keep that guy here, and we will keep him down as a... <clears throat> keep these guys here, and this guy here. Let's move those guys in. Um, from the north... I think I've moved everybody. So now we have our uh, now we have our attacks, and the attacks are going to be six and eight and nine. So six and nine is fifteen. Seventeen to six, not quite three to one, but two to one odds. Six, man, and he will move in. We're gonna he's gonna try to take that artillery out. Um, up here we got a six and twelve to three. There's our three to one, which is uh, is the best odds to have. Three to one, three defender retreats. Okay, he can get ripped to shreds there. So we are going to keep out of that. Okay, that's it for the Austrian move. So we are done with round two. Round three, and this is when the Austrians are going to get their first bunch of, of replacements, reinforcements, but let's see what the French can do. And I think at this point the French could make an attack. Um, we've got lots of units out here that is are isolated, so one, two, there, there.
<clears throat> we could try to cross here, but it would be dangerous. Or we could try to go down here. Um, one, two. Okay, these guys are going down here. Four. It's uh, Fourth of July, so if you hear anything cracking, it's fireworks outside. Okay, I think we've got all the French units. Of oh, these guys here. Eh. He could try to go over here and attack. Uh, he could easily be enveloped, though, so maybe he'll just stay put. Hold on. Six and one. Okay, there we go. And we will try to we'll try to surround that guy there. Okay, I think I've got everybody moved. And in place, uh, let's get rid of the moves here. Let's see how these guys do. 6, 12, so 12 to 12, 13, 14 to 4. 3 to 1 odds. 4, defender retreats. So that means that this Austrian unit is out of there. Okay. We're going to go here with the 6 and 9. 15 to 3, 5 to 1 odds, 3, 5 to 1, 3, 1, 2, 3 is Defender Retreats, 3, okay, and I will let him go into that position, and then 8, 16 to 3, 3, uh, 16 to 3 is 5 to 1 odds, 5 to 1, 3 is a Defender Retreats, 1, 2, 3, and I will take that. Okay, then these guys here, 8 and 4 is 12, 8, 16, 16 and 4 is 20 to 6, 3 to 1 odds there, 5, 3 to 1, 5, Defender Retreats, 3, okay. I forgot to include that artillery. That's okay. Okay, so 6 and 12. 12 and 4 is 16 to 6. So 2 to 1 odds. 2. 2. Take that. And then finally, 12 to 3. 4 to 1 odds. 1. Okay, that should eliminate that guy. So these little cavalry units tend to wilt pretty quickly under fire. Here we've got a 8 and a 9, a 17 to 18, 1 to 2 odds, 1. Ooh, Defender Retreats. And we will take it. Okay, and then down here we've got a 6, a 4 is a 10, 16 to 9, 1 to 1 odds. Four. One, two, three, four. Attacker retreats. If we had a defender retreat, we could have taken that guy out. Two. We'll just take that. And one, two, three. And when they're retreating, you don't worry about terrain so much. Um, six to one. Hoping for a four. Six to one. Four. Defender retreats. OK. 
Okay, we won't pull away from the pack there to chase him, so. Okay, Austrians get a go. First thing is they get these reinforcements, which will help them out quite a bit. Um, you can see their attack at the center has kind of gone to hell, but hopefully we can bring things back from the brink a little bit. Let's see, one, two, three, four, there we go. We're gonna try to take this guy out. I was trying to figure out how to get around these guys. Move here and here and here. And we're kind of moving around the uh, this is like in the real battle with the Austrians kind of moving around this uh, left flank. Anything here? Yeah, those guys. And... Defender artillery. <coughs> okay. Well, that's pretty much the Austrian move, pretty short. So we've got five and six is eleven and nine. Twenty two nine. So two to one odds. Three. Defender retreats. Okay, here we have six and six is 12 to four, three to one odds. Two. And here, same thing, six. And then finally we have some eight and uh, six is 14 and five 19 to four four to one odds at four one two three four and this is gonna since he's retreating this is going to cause everybody to move back a little bit i don't think i'll move into that position here Okay, 6, 12, 18 to 6, 3 to 1 odds, 2, retreats, 1, 2, and I will take that. And then down here, 6 and 9, 15 to 6, 2 to 1, defender retreats. Oh, this is bad because since it's the defender's artillery, they can't retreat, so they're eliminated. He'll just move right into spot here, and that's it. Okay, Austrian turn is over, and we go into turn four.
Okay, due to some technical difficulties, we are now in turn 12. Um, just a real recap of what happened is the uh, French have been hammering pretty hard on the Austrian uh, right flank, and slowly they're dissolving it. At the same time, John's troops finally came in down here and have created a diversion against the uh, French right flank. Um, and the middle continues to kind of dissolve here. Well, I decided that one breakaway unit would go up here and try to um, show up in these towns to um, get some victory points, but it doesn't look like, it looks like the cavalry is going to take them out eventually here. So we should have done it with a cavalry unit. That would have worked a little better. Um, so that's the end of, actually, the end of round 12. Let's remove to round 13. I think it's going to be pretty much a French victory, but we'll just see here. Um, the French are going to move into place, and actually, I think I just had the French. I kind of got discombobulated there. We'll just move these guys in. Keep those guys. Um, We're going to try to take that, that rather troublesome artillery unit out, even though the odds aren't real good here. We'll continue to try to do that, and we'll cross the river and attack here. Uh, we'll move this French horseman into place. I think the French have moved. Um, he'll kind of cover the flank here. So let's start down here. So we've got eight and... 12 and 18, so 3 to 1 odds, 5, DR, he's gone, because he's surrounded, down here we have a, this is 18, so this is going to be 8 and 6 is 14, and 9 is 25, and 8 is... 33 to 9, so that's 2 to 1 odds, 6, oh no, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, okay. Move down here, and he's 1 to 2 odds, 5, okay, and then these two here are 6 and 5 to 12, since he's only escarpment. 11 to 12, so 1 to 2, 1, okay. You'll move into place. Actually, I'm going to move this guy into place. Okay, right here we have a 6 and a 12. 13 to 8, 1 to 1, 1. Nope, he's gone. And we have 6 and 12, 2 to 1 odds. 6, 1, 2, Okay, 6 and 5 and 5 is 10, 11 and 7 is 1 to 1, 4, he's gone, wait, 1 to 1, 4, attacker retreats, 1, 2, okay, 6 and 10, 16 to 6, 2 to 1 odds, 5, attacker retreats, and there we go. Open oh, this guy up here. Three and four. That's seven one to one odds. Three. Okay, that got rid of that guy there. Okay, Austrians can go. Um, you know, I think the Austrians are just going to pull back. Let's pull back here.
Okay, hopefully by a stroke of luck they can take it. So six and nine. Um, since he's on the escarpment, that's not going to count. So six and nine is fifteen to six, two to one odds. Two. Two. He moves back six to one. Four is a six to one. Four is a defender retreat. I think six to one. Four is a defender retreat. Yeah. And then we're going to go down here, five, one to one, one, three, and then six and seven, two to one, four, two to one, four, defender retreat, two, and sixteen, five, sixteen to six is two to one, five, check a retreat. Oh no, okay. So, that didn't work out too well for the. Wait, nope. I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong side here. Six to ten. One to two odds. Six. One, two. Okay, there, much better. Okay, last round of game. Let's see what's going to go on here. The French will try to attack. Um, I think what they're going to do is bring up these troops here. We need to move up onto the escarpment if we can, so. Because that's worth points. Um, okay. And that's going to be about it for the French. And let's play it out. So. We'll say 6 to 14, uh, 1 to 3, 1 to 3, 4 attacker retreats, 2, okay, 8 and 9 against a 14, let's go with 6 and 8 and 9, so it's 15, 23 to 14, so 1 to 1 odds, 6, and... One to one five. French are not doing well this round. Okay, and then finally here six, twelve, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen to seven. So two to one odds five attack retreats. Okay. That's it for the French round. Let's run with the Austrian round and see how they do. I think I'm going to go ahead and rush these guys. I'll move that up there and take that guy out. And he's annoying me. Okay, Austrian rounds. Here we go, last part. The Austrians are going to put one last feudal fight back here. And um, we're going to go, let's go with the 9 and 7 to 6, 12. Okay, 1 to 1. Roll low, 4, attack retreats. Okay, and then we're going to go a 7 and a 9. Is a 16 to it with one to one. Not that one, two. Okay, six to one, two. Okay, gets rid of that guy. And we have a nine and a six is a 15 to five, three to one odds, four. One, two. So I drove him off the plateau. I'll just say he can go there. And then finally, Ten to six, or six 
6 and 6 is 12, and a 7 is 19 to 10. So barely 1 to 1, 2. Takes out that guy. Okay. And thus ends the game. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, figure out points here, and then we will come back and just make a few closing remarks. Okay, so the points end up being the Austrians end up with 91 points, and the French end up with 158 points. So it's a pretty decisive French victory. Uh, kind of went along with the historical one. Overall, it's like most of the other uh, Napoleon at War type games. It's pretty decent to play. I think it's easy, and it'd be a good game for people that might be interested in Napoleonics. It's a little bit obscure, but or the battle is at least, but I think it's a it's a decent game. So I'd continue to play this series, and hopefully we'll come back with some more in a few weeks. I think I'm going to take a break from it though for a little while. So again, thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate it. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe. And if you need some comments, then let me have some comments on how to make the channel better. Thanks a lot. Bye.